combine her career-long assault on the law with Gianforte's lawsuit against the state, as well as his record in Congress. I don't think anybody's assaulted public lands in Congress more than Greg Gianforte. He's only been there a couple years. Welcome to MCV Cast. I'm Aaron Murphy, Executive Director of Montana Conservation Voters. That was Wes Seiler, a columnist for Outside Magazine based in Bozeman. We'll get his perspective on Montana's anti-public lands politicians in a few moments. I'm here with Clara Stein, Political Director Jake Brown, and Deputy Director Whitney Taney. Gang, it will be a good week when we don't have to keep hearing about the unconstitutional dumpster fire that is William Perry Penley. But in September, a federal court order removed William Perry Penley from leading the Bureau. The ruling said his 424-day appointment to the agency violates federal law and the Constitution's requirement that the Senate confirm him. So what's he doing here? I'm doing what a deputy director of policy and programs, a political appointee at the Bureau of Land Management does. That was NPR's Kirk Sigler catching up with the illegal acting director of the Bureau of Land Management. Despite Mr. Pendley's lie that he's somehow not the acting director. Well, Whitney Tani, all this is catching the attention of at least one member of Montana's congressional delegation. This week, Senator John Tester proved again he's a true leader dedicated to protecting Montana's outdoor way of life. MCV applauds his new legislation that would block the U.S. Department of Justice from taking further action to defend public lands foe William Perry Pendley's unlawful tenure as acting director of the Bureau of Land Management. Senator Tester's Public Lands Leadership Act would prohibit the Justice Department from defending Pendley in the lawsuit brought by Governor Steve Bullock against Pendley and the BLM. Tester says Pendley is, quote, nothing more than an unelected Washington bureaucrat who is willing to break the law to sell off our public lands, end quote. Senator Daines should learn from this what a true public lands champion looks like and co-sponsor the bill immediately. So far, Senator Daines has not lifted a finger about his own constituents' concerns about William Perry Penley. By the way, Whitney wrote an op-ed about Senator Steve Daines and his failure to hold Mr. Penley accountable. You may have seen it run in various media outlets across the state. Whitney, what's the gist and why'd you write it? I guess I'm just fed up with the fact that Senator Daines continues to get away with saying nothing, especially when William Perry Penley has put our public lands in direct threat here in Montana. He took action to open up hundreds of thousands of acres to oil and gas All of this has been unlawful. He's illegal. He shouldn't be there any longer, and we need our junior senator to finally stand up. All right. Well, there's a link to Whitney's op-ed in our show notes, and we also have a link to a new video from MCV's endorsed candidate for attorney general. Jake, Rafe Grable has an important message for voters because it comes down to public lands. That's right, Murph. MCV endorsed candidate Rafe Grable released a new video this week detailing the attempts of his opponent, Austin Knutson, to block public access to a veterans park in Knutson's hometown of Culbertson. For 50 years, veterans in Montana had access to the veterans park just behind me here in Culbertson. Till Austin Knutson bought up the land, put a gate over the road, and closed off access. As Attorney General, I'll have these heroes backs. The video features a local veteran who has been locked in this legal battle for years. Essentially, the Knutson family owns all of the land around the public veterans park and has been trying to block the public's access to the park for years. The video showcases a line from the veterans affidavit, which says he was even accosted by Austin Knutson. So the park was here um, almost 50 years before the Knutsons purchased the surrounding property. And this article, I mean, I've got my lawyer hat on, but this article to me doesn't say they gave it so that you couldn't use it. No, exactly. <laughs> they, said, That's... they said you gave it so you could use it. Yes. And then you did use it. for. And we have for 50 years almost. Years. U.S. District Court Judge Brian Morris, the same judge who ruled against William Perry Penley, has denied a request from the tribal community for a temporary hold on construction of the Keystone XL pipeline in northern Montana. Judge Morris said he won't stop construction of a 1.2-mile section of pipe that crosses the U.S.-Canada border while he considers whether President Trump violated the U.S. Constitution when he issued permits for the project. Opponents of the pipeline argue it crosses through tribal land, endangers tribal members, and harms the environment. This week, the candidates for public service commissioner in District 4, Western Montana, met for a debate hosted by the Missoula City Club. 
MCV's endorsed candidate in that race is Monica Trinnell. She faced state senator Jennifer Fielder, who just earned a spot on the LCV Victory Fund's Dirty Dozen in the state's list. About an hour into the debate, Fielder began questioning the validity of renewable energy. Yeah, it's uh, interesting that it's called green energy because um, it's actually not as green as, as you might think. I mean, we just learned uh, there was a little tour up at the mine that's been trying to get open here for 33 years up in my part of the state. And it's a silver, there's a silver and, and copper deposit. And these uh, mining companies have been going through the process of trying to obtain permits for 33 years now. And um, the average wind machine requires five tons of copper. But yet the folks that are advocating, you know, purely advocating green energy are also advocating keep it in the ground and not allow any mining. Monica Trinnell responded with a strong comparison between the energy transition we find ourselves in now and the Industrial Revolution two centuries ago. And first, I want to tell a little anecdote. So in the early 1800s, uh, we delivered goods by barge through canals. And the steam engine came along and made those canals obsolete. What did the canal operators do? They built more canals. They doubled down on their technology and insisted, because their profits demanded it, that they were going to inc continue doing a technology that had gone away. It was obsolete. That's where we stand today. The energy transition is underway. It's happening across the world. This is an incredibly exciting time for everyone. As we reported last week, Glenn Florio, the editor of The Missoulian, resigned after her paper endorsed Senator Fielder. After a major public outcry, The Missoulian retracted its endorsement and endorsed Monica Trinnell. This week, Florio spoke with Montana Public Radio Sally Mock about the ordeal. I just felt that that endorsement was so out of line that it seem like there was nothing to do but step down. Tell us a little more about why you felt it was so out of line, the endorsement. You know, we've covered Jennifer Fielder over the years uh, with some of the things she's been involved with. She, um, most notably, I think the one people are familiar with, spoke at a forum uh, where Eamon Bundy also spoke. You know, the Bundys are the folks who were involved in the standoff at the Malheur Wildlife Refuge. Uh, she also spoke at the Citizens Equal Rights Alliance, and they're a group that uh, really tries to undercut tribal sovereignty. She favors transferring public lands to state control, just a lot of things that are anathema to a lot of the people, I think, in Montana, and certainly to our readers. <laughs> This month, Outside Magazine published an in-depth look at Congressman Greg Gianforte's second attempt to become Montana's next governor, along with his running mate, Kristen Juris. The headline of the story, In Montana, Stream Access is on the Ballot. And because both Gianforte and Juris have disastrous records when it comes to our public lands, the story pulls no punches. And its author is this week's guest. Wes Seiler is a columnist for Outside Magazine. His popular travel adventure column, called Indefinitely Wild, is a must-read for countless explorers of the great outdoors. Wes writes about gear, gadgets, cooking, camping, pets, and public lands. And that, mean he, and that means he also stays on top of the political landscape and the politicians who impact our public lands, waters, and wildlife. Wes Seiler joins us from his home in Bozeman. Hey, Wes. How's it going, Aaron? Thanks for having me. I want to get to your most recent story about Congressman Gianforte in a moment. But first, welcome to MCV Cast. Tell us more about the work you do, who you write for, and what you do for fun along the way. Yeah, I mean, I think you summed it up really well. I, I am in a very fortunate position of being able to write about the outdoor lifestyle that I enjoy with my lovely wife, Virginia. Um, you know, I never really set out to be a political writer. It just sadly has to be a part of covering the outdoors in this modern world since the outdoors and public lands and the environment is under such strong attack from, from politicians. So we've got to ask, what's been your favorite thing to write about, especially here in Montana? <laughs> that's, that's always a fun question. Um, you know, I, I really throw myself into whatever I'm, I'm working on at the time. Um, so if you ask me right now, I'm going to tell you hunting season. Been out chasing um, an elk herd around the Lee Metcalf uh, most weekends and looking forward to getting started on a rifle uh, this, coming, uh, this coming Saturday. 
So your latest story, and we've linked to it in our show notes, is about Greg Gianforte, Kristen Juris, and Montana's very popular stream access law, writing that if elected, they would, quote, represent an unprecedented assault on public access, threatening jobs that rely on outdoor recreation, and even potentially impacting the state's booming outdoor recreation economy. What was it exactly that prompted you to write that? Um, I mean, because it's the truth. Um you know, I, I guess like a lot of people, I became aware of, of Greg Gianforte during his original run for governor, um, and they became very aware of him when he body slammed a reporter after the last cycle. You know, and that kind of thing, and that, that assault on the press is, is really a really disgusting element of our current political situation in America. Um, and it definitely sort of inspires me to want to stand up for my fellow reporters and also, you know, look deeper into the people that are, that are doing these things. So having moved to Bozeman two and a half years ago, I, I, you know, started exploring local politics and, you know, trying to research who I should vote for. And, you know, you sort of start um, looking into Greg Gianforte. I mean, just like anybody here, just throw his name in Google and see what comes up. And it's just it, it just every new article about him or every new fact you learn about him is just even more disturbing as you sort of go along. You're like, oh, you know, um, this guy's super rich and wants to destroy public access. And then, oh, he's a young earth creationist and believes that dinosaurs and, and you know, mankind uh, work together to plow fields. And then, oh, he hates gays. And you're like, oh, <laughs> like, where, where, where does this stop? So your story follows the money and a lot of folks in Montana are familiar with some of the more controversial funding projects of Congressman Gianforte, like something you just mentioned. There's a museum in Glendive that claims every species of dinosaur squeezed onto the ark with Noah uh, <laughs> just a few thousand years ago. But you focused on a very concerning money trail when it comes to our public lands. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. So if you dig into the tax records of the Gianforte Family Foundation, uh, which are publicly available, you can sort of see how they spend their money and they largely spend their political donations, which, you know, like most rich people, they make to get tax breaks on really hateful social causes. So they're trying to control women's bodies they're trying to prevent gay marriage. Um, and you look at like the totals there and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, but they also spend money uh, supporting organizations like, uh, you know, the Heritage Foundation, which is a Koch Brothers shell to further climate change denial. And so Greg Gianforte feels he has to donate money to that as well for some reason. You know, it's the Heritage Foundation, it's PERC, it's anti-access, uh, anti-science, anti-public lands, think tanks that are largely created to support the oil and gas industries. Well, and then there's Kristen Juris, Congressman Gianforte's running mate for lieutenant governor. What surprised you most in your research of Ms. Juris? What is the most important takeaway for us as readers and as voters? She really has a strong history of directly assaulting uh, the stream access law. It was really surprising. I, I hadn't, as a, a, a new Montana, I hadn't really been familiar with her, you know, since she's not running for sort of the headline here and just sort of the lieutenant seat. I, I just never researched her before I sat down to look at this, this piece. And, you know, she spent most of her career directly assaulting the stream access law only to sort of reverse course in public and say that she hadn't when she ran for Supreme Court, state Supreme Court in 2016. And that that kind of two facedness, um, I find really disturbing in in, in politicians, uh, both as a member of the public and a reporter. You know, and you, you sort of combine her career long assault on the law with GM Forte's lawsuit against the state, as well as his record in Congress. Uh, I don't think anybody's assaulted public lands in Congress more than Greg GM Forte. He's only been there a couple of years. You, you know, it just it just paints a very disturbing picture. Um, you connect the dots, and it only points in one direction. Um, you know, that being. Neither one of them likes extreme access law. Neither one of them likes public lands. They have a history of concertedly working to eliminate public access, eliminate protections. And, you know, it, it doesn't add up to, to good things for Montanans. So another connection point with Montana's very popular stream access law is the acting director of the Bureau of Land Management. And we know that you've raised some concerns there as well. We've had plenty to say about William Perry Penley, too, because um, as you know, a federal judge, Brian Morris, just ruled a few days ago that basically invalidated a lot of the things that Mr. Penley had done, especially when it comes to major land use plans for Montana. But he's still running the BLM. So what can Montanans do to bring more accountability to the situation? So for listeners who aren't familiar, um, you know, there's no reason you should be unless you really closely follow politics. Um, William Perry Penley is this really objectionable human being um, 
who has dedicated his entire career to destroying America's entire public land system. Um, Google his name. Uh, don't take my word for it. You'll be shocked by what you what you read. Anyways, he sued Montana to try to eliminate the stream access law in 2001. Um, you know, everything he does is an attack on the public lands. For some reason, you know, I'll, I'll let you connect the dots on that one. He got tapped to run uh, the Bureau of Land Management through a, a scheme that has now been ruled illegal by a federal court, um, thanks to a lawsuit from Steve Bullock. The Republican Party supports this guy. Uh, GM Forte has said nothing but nice things about him. Steve Daines has said nothing but nice things about him. And yet we have, you know, Bullock successfully winning a lawsuit against the federal government to push him out of his acting director position uh, and basically rule that all his actions uh, that were taken uh, during his like 400 plus days of, of illegal rule were also illegal. And that's an incredible win for conservation. That's an incredible win for public lands. And you know, it's only that, that's coming from Democrats. That's not coming from the Republicans. Um, and so especially here in Montana, that's that's really disturbing that, you know, you would have GM Forte be a team player with the Republican Party on somebody as sort of despicable as Pinley. Yeah, uh, we are turning up the heat on the accountability there as best we can. But I uh, appreciate you illuminating folks on that. One of the things that we at MCV have very little patience for is candidates who greenwash their records. So for example, Senator Steve Daines calls himself a conservationist after wow. six years of pushing bad bills, casting terrible votes against clean air and water and supporting big polluters and deniers of climate change. And one conservation bill doesn't make you a conservationist. Um, what can we do to set the record straight in your mind when politicians and candidates tell us voters what we want to hear without voting the way they need to? Hold them accountable. Don't vote for people that do that stuff. The Great American Outdoors Act is, is a particularly interesting act of greenwashing. First, and this is this is something that I've, I should have written a story about over the summer and kind of got so caught up in everything else. You know, I didn't get to connect these, these particular storylines, but it was originally introduced by John Lewis, um, who obviously passed away recently. Uh, it wasn't taken up, and then it was reintroduced uh, by these vulnerable Republicans, uh, Cory Gardner and Steve Daines. In an election year, they claim that it fully funds LWCF. Um, it only funds at 1974 le uh, levels. As we all know, inflation's a thing. So it really only funds a, a quarter of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Steve Dane's lifetime record on conservation votes is 6%. He's only voted for public lands, the environment, and conservation 6% of the time across hundreds of votes. He's actually voted to defund LWCF on multiple occasions. He introduced legislation alongside GM Forte that would have been the biggest reduction in public land protections in Montana history. You know, this, this guy is not our ally. Uh, and, you know, one bill does not make you a conservationist. One bill does not make you an environmentalist. You know, it's, it's a joke. We are on the same page. But um, so when this episode is published, we'll have a little over 10 days until the election. What should voters keep in mind as they fill out their ballots and are there candidates here in Montana on the ballot this year that you believe will protect our outdoor heritage for future generations? Is it okay if I quote uh, Yvonne Chouinard? Of course, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I you'll find st stitched inside uh, the labels of a lot of Patagonia gear, gear right now, uh, vote, vote the assholes out. Uh, there is not a Republican running for office that is our friend this year. Um, I am not typically a straight ticket Democratic voter. I have nuanced views on a number of issues. I just delivered my vote to the Gallatin County Courthouse yesterday. Uh, it was straight ticket Democrat. Um, I think anybody who cares about public lands, anybody who cares about the environment, anybody who cares about democracy um, needs to vote straight ticket Democrat this year. It is the only, the only viable option. There are no good Republican candidates in this state or nationally right now. Uh, any, any parting thoughts from you, Wes, um, on all of these issues? Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to be just like you guys and sort of on the edge of my seat to see what the results are here. Um, no matter what happens um, in terms of our state and nationally, I hope that all of us continue to fight the good fight. Uh, I hope that all of us continue to be able to tell the difference between right and wrong. And I hope that all of us continue to stand up for that and make that heard. We hear you loud and clear. Wes Seiler is a columnist for Outside Magazine, joining us from his home in Bozeman, and you can find him on social media at Indefinitely Wild. That's also the name of his column. Wes, thanks so much for being on MCV Cast. Thanks for having me, guys. 
The guests of MCV Cast do not necessarily reflect the views of Montana Conservation Voters, its staff, or its board of directors. And in full disclosure, the MCV Action Fund very easily endorsed Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney and Representative Casey Schreiner in the race for Montana's next governor. Days before Congressman Greg Gianforte loaned his campaign for governor another $4 million, bringing the total up to $7.5 million, the Montana's Commissioner of Political Practices found the Republican candidate violated campaign finance laws. The Gianforte campaign was caught illegally moving money from their primary account to their general account in an attempt to circumvent Montana's low campaign donation limits. Essentially, the campaign was still raising money into their primary election count well after the June election, and then transferring that money into the campaign's general election fund. Now, the campaign must either return the $181,000 or refund all the contributions the campaign received into the primary account after the June election. A new water quality standard designed to protect northwest Montana's Lake Kukanusa and the Kootenai River from rising levels of contamination has cleared a major legislative hurdle. The six-year process of drafting these new regulations has been a collaborative effort involving tribes in both Montana and British Columbia, along with federal, state, and provincial entities in Montana and B.C. Despite this thorough, collaborative, and scientific process, GOP leaders claimed that the new regulations were rushed in an attempt to delay a legislative ruling until next year. This effort was rejected. The Department of Environmental Quality is accepting public comment through November 23rd and will host a remote public hearing on November 5th via a Zoom conference call. And this is really a story about coming together and reconciling differences. MCV was honored to partner with Patagonia earlier this week for an exclusive screening of their award-winning film, Public Trust. The film explores America's public lands and our fight to protect them. It also features some of our most prominent conservation advocates in Montana, including Juanita Barrow, our endorsed candidate for Missoula County Commission. If you missed our screening, jump onto our Facebook page where it's still available through the end of October via a link and password. And while you're at it, give us a follow and share our work with your family and friends. And please remember, mask up, vote, and we'll see you next week. What's at stake is this enormous common wealth. The American system of public lands. 